Yo, yo, A double L E N in the building. What up? Hey, hey. My guy got on the Croatia t shirt. One month till the Euros. You, first time in three years of getting an international tournament. It's been long overdue. Usually, you only have to wait two years. It's due to the pandemic. We had to wait a little longer. Any buzz, you think? People starting to talk about it now or what? Because I feel like it's been pretty quiet uh, in sports media as far as the Euro Cup coming around. That's that's a fair point. I, I thought there was maybe more buzz back when it was you know, the last one, 2016. I think maybe just because club season still going on and like they're trying to squeeze all that in and then the whole super league debacle mm. there's just been a lot of different storylines but i think once early june hits it'll, it'll start to pick up because once you get the international tournament buzz it's like all right we're getting four weeks of non-stop action those summers when there's international soccer yeah i think <clears throat> i think are the best sports summers you have mid-june to mid-july soccer takes up all your time even like the the casual sports fan mm-hmm. tunes in, they just love international soccer. Yeah. And then from there, before you know it, three four weeks, and then it's training camp, and then you have a storyline every day: who got cut, who got hurt, right. what rumors are being spread. Yeah. And then from there, the season starts. And this summer, we got the NBA is gonna be going longer. That's true too. Yeah, so that's gonna take us well into maybe. Wow, that's a good point because yeah. the playing games are next week. Right. And then you got to figure it's going to go into July for sure. So you still can get a lot of lot of good action this summer. It's yeah. just, yeah, but you're right though when it comes, and ESPN has the rights, so like the promotion's there. You know, mm-hmm. What better outlet to have than ESPN? But I just think right now, I think the whole fall of the Super League is really like kind of dampered the sport a bit just because that, w- that could have really just ruined everything. I don't think the people understood the ramifications of how bad that plan was. Yo, you know what just crossed my mind? Poirier Connor 3 that weekend might be like a semifinals Euro Cup weekend. Might be a conference finals NBA. Then you got that. That's going to be a zoo. Vegas. Man, I remember speaking of the Euro Cup, Mm -hmm. I was in Vegas in 2016 and I put $500 on England at 14 to 1 to win the, the Euro Cup. And I was at Wet Republic, and one of the cabanas over there, it was a big Manchester United flag. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like walked by it, and uh, they were playing Russia at the time in the group stages, and they were beating Russia in the first half. <clears throat> and I just go to, I, I end up linking up with one of the dudes from that cabana at the bar. I was like, yo, I bet on you guys to win the Euro Cup. Like, let's go. We won that game because I wasn't paying attention to the mm-hmm. game. He's like, nah, those fucking idiots, they tied against Russia. I think it was like a set piece. Yeah. Minute. <laughs> I was like, damn. And he goes, buddy, I wouldn't have wagered on us. I was like, oh, thanks for the more confidence, man. Uh, I think there's more buzz out of England going to this tournament, but it's Fran- France has just built such a powerhouse. And Port- just like Portugal's, even though they did win the last year, it's like this is their resurgence. Mm-hmm. Like Portugal looks like as good as they did back in like 04, 06, like their golden ages now. So. If you're putting any wagers, uh, France, Portugal, and if you're looking for a sleeper, maybe the Dutch are back. Holland and Italy are back. Two traditionals are finally back in a major tournament for the first time. So you know, I know you don't have much good to say about the Italians, but I think you like the Dutch a little bit. You know what? I uh, I never liked Italian soccer. I never liked the whole... They're, they're the creators of the flopping, mm-hmm. the Italians. Not yeah. everyone does it, but Italians did originate. They did originate it. They did... To like the tenth power, <laughs> I their soccer never was appealing to me. It's evolved a bit, but I think that's more from attracting international talent rather than from within. Loved Pirlo. Pirlo was one of my idols growing up. Yeah. He was the man, yo. He Him to, and he about to lose his job, but yeah. and and, and Totti was my guy too. Yeah. But yeah, they just never they just never did it for me. Though my dad did wager on them in 06 Ooh. at ten to one to win. And my, my dad my dad was like celebrating with all the Italians on Steinway and shit, just like honking their ho- horns Dude. and all that in Astoria. It was like four hours nonstop. Oh yeah, it was a zoo. Yeah, yeah. Yo, think about think about Astoria back then, dude. Like all right, so for, for those listening that have never been to Queens, like Astoria mm-hmm. might be one of the most diverse places. Probably in the country or maybe even in the world. Like mm. you walk down Dittmar's Boulevard, you could get Japanese, Mexican food, uh, African food, uh, Korean, Ecuadorian. Greek, like literally everything. All in like a 10 block radius. It used to be Croatian. 
for teardrop. Oh, <laughs> damn. Yo, that Croatian bar that like David Deal was at that one yeah, time. I used to go play beer pong that there. That was the greatest place. Oh. That place was lit. <laughs> yeah. They used to have beer pong and, and the winning team would get a $50 beer tab. Man. When you're fucking 22, you're like, yo. What? I, I was going there when I was 15. You know? Let's win salute, that. To, salute to Scorpio. <laughs> so, yo, so Astoria is a very, very big Italian and Greek community, mm-hmm. like historically. And even to this day, it's a lot. So imagine the 04 summer, Greece wins the Euro Cup, mm-hmm. which is pretty funny, hindsight. We'll never get old. <laughs> I didn't get to sports low six, so I'm glad I missed that portion. And then <laughs> and then Italy wins the, the World Cup in 06. Right. And look, back in 2018, Croatians did play. They did, We took over a store a little bit. Mm-hmm. There was like two blocks that were shut down for, for uh, after they beat England. So unfortunately, they won the final, but... Like you said, a story of very, very diversified. And, you know, who knows? Like, imagine if Columbia did something big. Dude, when they went on that run in 2014. To the quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit was pretty lit, man. The Colombians don't mess around, man. And you know me with Colombian chicks. All Colombians. I mean. Salute to them. The best. That's that's the LeBron James (laughs) of of chicks. Unanimous number one draft pick. Can't bust potential. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, them, the Brazilians show out, too. Yeah. Like more so, I, I think the Brazilians and the Colombian fan bases mm-hmm. get like really, really rowdy. Like I remember being at the beer garden for Aldo O'Connor, and like you had a lot of Brazilian. Damn, that was in December. There. Yeah, but there was a lot of fucking fans Damn, there. No man. beer garden this year, man. I, a lot of locals. Dude, lot of it's, it's been shut down. I know they turned it into like warehouses and shit and fucking office space. One of the coolest bars. It really was. It's fucking the best place to go watch sporting events. Yeah. But uh, another fan base that like gets into it too is like the Mexican fans too. Mm-hmm. They fucking get oh, out. They, it. You do not want to get to any verbal dispute disputes with them. Like they just they have no filter whatsoever. Bro, and they show out like they they showed out for Canelo over the weekend mm-hmm. too. Like they fucking. Yeah. There's something about Hispanic and Latin American countries that like for sports. When it comes to sports, those yeah. motherfuckers go all in, yeah. bro. Whether it be soccer, combat sports, you know, baseball, like. Bro, when Brazil lost 7 1 to Germany, Yo. <laughs> you would have thought someone's grandmother got shot Dude. in front of them. Talk about tears and in Brazil, too. Yeah, the host country. What a fucking ass whooping, huh? How, host country. And it's a semi final. Like, it wasn't some group stage match. We're talking about. The dream of a, a, a Argentina Brazil yeah. final like that would have been fucking lit. And Jeremy just goes, "Nope, for nothing." Within twenty minutes, you're just watching. Like majority of those goals were like it was amateur hour. Just like they weren't even well put. It was just like all right. It was a massacre. Yo. Like you watched it and you felt bad. Like I'm feeling bad for Brazil. Like how is this possible? What's the biggest like sport ass whoopings you can remember? Where like a team was just out by like. I always took maybe a, like 10 percent of the game. I always took a Broncos Seahawks. Oh, that was good. Yeah, <laughs> just like once that ball went over Payton's head, you just knew, right? Like, yeah. oh, it is gonna be rough. And then just the weather, and then just seeing Seattle's defense, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that Super Bowl, Percy Harvin, fucking uh, what was his name? The Malcolm, Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith. People forget Percy Harvin, Golden Tate, legit had a. Fight, fight, fight like, yeah. Three days beforehand, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a Pete Carroll for like alleviating all that tension. Like that, that's well, how, how about chose. how good that that core was too, man. That was the like the original. That was Legion peak. Of that was peak. That was peak with, Seahawks with Thomas Chancellor. Then you had Sherman, and that's when Byron Maxwell was good, and then KJ Wright, and Bobby Wagner, and then that D line with Bennett, Avril, uh, Brandon Meebane. Like they just they had it all. I think young Bruce Irvin too. I'm trying to think of other games where a team just got. Oh, there was that Rockets. Game seven against the Spurs, oh. or was it a game six? It was where like Harden got concussed, and right, I think it was over like by se- early second quarter in Houston. Was... They they beat him by like forty, and it was over at like halftime. Right. And the game was done. And base hard because you got to look at like game six or seven. It's like yeah, concluding yeah. games. Yeah, where like game sevens historically they're pretty tight, low scoring. I know the under always has like a very high. Mm-hmm. Conversion rate. I remember Euro 2012 Spain beat Italy four nothing. I watched with a bunch of Italians, and they were they legitimately thought Italy was gonna pull up because remember this was a Spain that won Euro eight 2010. This was like, can they get the three P? Meanwhile, Italy just beat Germany. Balotelli had that brace peak Balotelli moment when he took the show off yeah, like the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they're yeah. like, yo, we're gonna beat Spain. We're gonna end it. And then Spain within like 50 minutes four nothing. That was another one. Yo, I think there was a Stanley Cup game. It was like the Canucks and the Bruins. 
I think it might have been. Oh, where's Dylan like, for this? Yeah, it was like four nothing within like the first period, yeah. and it was just. What about fights? That was like to- well, recently Wilder Fury too. Within two minutes, I was like, oh wow, okay. Oh, you thought it was a rap right yeah, there? Yeah, I knew Wilder wow, was. You just getting tagged too much. Fights, it's fights, it's weird because you you kind of can set like. This is gonna hurt you, but you kind of knew. Yeah, Stipe, Stipe was kind of doomed after like that first exchange. Oh no! Once he shot double again, the sprawl was <laughs> when picture perfect. When Francis like, sprawled, and you're like, "All right, you're in trouble." I was buddy. like, "Does Stipe throw a leg kick, or is this?" <laughs> it was only a matter of time, but yeah. It's... I wonder about fights though, like truly one sided beatings. <sighs> well, wasn't there a main event recently where it was like fifty forty? Oh, dude! Oh, Holloway, Max, and Cater. Yeah. I was a fucking right. historic ass whooping. Yeah, <sighs> it was bad. Yeah, dude. Like those are like one of the first UFC events I watched was Le- um, Lesnar Mir, and like once I saw like the weight of Andrews was by like I want to say thirty five pounds, and Lesnar just throwing those hammer fists on Mir. I was like, okay, this is bad. Like he took Mir strawberries. That was a joke. It's like, damn, Brock just punched the strawberries out of him. So that was a- fights is hard because you think it, they get finished. You would think, yeah. So it's it's hard to think like truly one side prolonged beatings. That's why I think Max is the one that comes to mind, yeah. like that I could think of. That's... Some will say Khabib Connor, but I thought Connor kind of held his own for a bit. Well, there, there, a lot of people say that that was the only round that Habib has lost in his career. Oh, right, like that round three, I think it might have yeah, been because yeah. he got finished in round right. four. I just, I just think people remember the sound bites and like Connor asking for mercy at one point, which is why the and you know he got dropped too. Well, like the majority that. of that fight was Habib doing yeah. his usual ground and pound. Right, right. Yeah, you're right, though. Fights are a little interesting. Um, there was, I mean, I remember there was the Monday Night Football game. The Pats played the Jets, like, in, like, 2010. Ooh, and that was when the Jets were, like, big time. Like, Rex was talking them up. Well, that was the year, though. Fast forward to the playoffs, the Jets beat them in Foxborough. Because right. I remember I was up in Buffalo for that. Mm-hmm. So, what you're talking about, big games. Um, you know, We both attended one uh, in 2012. Wild card weekend. <laughs> well, it's a little bit different though because the moment I saw Matt Ryan, I always tell this story. Matt Ryan is warming up. He's there with my guy Julio and uh, rookie, rookie Julio, rookie Julio, dreadlock Julio, dreadlock Julio, next to Roddy and Gonzalez Julio and uh, Matt Ryan. They show him up on the jumbotron, like they show Eli, and the crowd is like cheering and whatnot. And then they show Matt Ryan, and Matt Ryan literally does this. He goes, "It was cold," and he goes like this. He goes, "It's cold." Like yeah. you hear it, and I was like, I turned, I turned to like the guys that that I was sitting with. I was like, "Yo, we're gonna blow them out." <laughs> I was like, "It's a wrap, dude." I was like, "This dude can't feel his fingers. It's quiet, yeah. bro." That's like that's a Jared Goff day now. <laughs>